Well, for more of the day's market movements, James Gerrish from Short and Partners and author of Market Matters joins us now live in Sydney. James, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Look, we just had that ANZ readout when it comes to consumer confidence, obviously taking a dip post at those events that we saw last week. But how much effect do you think it will have in the long term? Yeah, good morning to you guys. Very little is probably the short answer in terms of confidence. Nadine made a, a pretty strong point there around um, you know, when consumer confidence pulls back, it often bounces. We obviously had a number of factors uh, playing out at the back end of, or just before Easter, that um, knocked around confidence. You made mention of JobKeeper, obviously uh, Brisbane COVID cases. Um, I think that you know, the cancellation of the Blues Fest up in Byron Bay is probably a, a major influence <laughs> yeah. on that number uh, as well. So um, I, think it'll, I think it'll bounce back. I don't think the mark from a market's point of view um, yeah, we're seeing a lot of impact uh, in terms of that number uh, on stocks. Let's get to some of um, you know, the moves overnight, how it could play out here in Australia. I mean, very, very quiet, but we did see a, a steady trade in gold, for example, even in light of the weaker US dollar, even in light of bond yields being quite calm and even falling. So what is that telling us about the psyche of investors right now? Yeah, it was the quietest night that we've had, um, or quietest session over in the US market we've had this year, Nadine. So uh, that puts the co into context sort of everyone still on the Easter break and the, the fact that um, US stocks, they came off the back of a strong end to um, the, the week uh, before Easter. And then they came out on Monday night and rallied pretty strongly, particularly the tech-based NASDAQ. So overnight was a, a night of consolidation. You made mention of gold, that rallied sort of $15, not a huge rally in terms of gold, and up nearly 1%. But if you think about the backdrop of um, uh, US yields starting to stabilize, uh, the US dollar has been strong. The US dollar index uh, rallied up above that 93 handle and has now pulled back and is heading back around that 92 handle. So I think the US dollar goes lower. I think treasury yields um, probably stabilize around this level um, that we've seen around the 170 handle. Uh, and if you get that sort of backdrop, we've seen gold uh, find support below 1700 and it's now up around the 1740. So in my view, that you know, there's no clear signs that gold is about to break its downtrend, but I think there's signs that it's at least basing and uh, you know, overnight moves um, like we've had are positive for bullion. So if you're an investor then, and there are a lot of bulls out there that still want to buy into this market, and you have seen some consolidation as we did overnight in the US, what sectors would you be looking at uh, that should outperform over the coming weeks? Yeah, I think there's, you know, it depends your time frame, but if, you, you've, got, if you've got a short term time frame, I think there's a, a trade to be made in domestic tech companies. Um, you know, they've had a really uh, pretty aggressive 13% decline in terms of um, you know, if we key off what the NASDAQ has done overseas. Uh, we've then seen you know, a large short position build up in tech stocks um, over in the US market. So, you know, to me that reeks of a potential short squeeze. We started to see it play out on Monday's session. Um, we haven't seen follow through overnight. But to me, probably tech stocks locally are a good short term bet. Um, you know, any any you know, strong appreciation in price there, though, would be a seller. So. Um, you know, buying now for a short term trade. I think you know, stocks that we're looking uh, to add to portfolios, Whitehaven Coal um, is, uh, you know, is trading around $1.80. I think it's worth closer to $2.50 based on where coal prices are at the moment. Um, some of the platform players are interesting here. So Hub24 um, got hit uh, last week after NetWealth uh, made an announcement about ANZ reducing their, um, uh, their, uh, their cash rates. Um, I think that's an area to look at. So I think you've just got to be active in this sort of market. And I think you know, going into um, Q2, April's a really strong month for equities. Uh, uh, you know, 90 percent of the time in the last 10 years, equities have been higher in, in April. So the backdrop's positive, but I think I'd be using you know, a breakout above 7,000 if it happens to sort of lighten the load on equities. 7,000. If we're looking for another catalyst to move markets higher, global markets, I should say, do you think that the U.S. earnings season, which kicks off next week, could be one such catalyst? Yeah, I think so. And I think, you know, if, if, if earnings, obviously, to state the obvious, coming better than expected, that could be the, um, you know, the catalyst to push um, equities higher. I think, you know, I'm, I'm searching for a catalyst at the moment, Dean. I think 
you know, the, the, the backdrop in terms of what we've seen in um, data and, um, uh, you know, support uh, relating to uh, the US uh, stimulus package, uh, what interest rates are doing, bond yields stabilising, etc. I think it's all probably pretty good news for, for equities. Uh, but it seems to me that that's um, you know, all fairly priced into markets at the moment. So I think we need you know, an external catalyst, external to sort of further stimulus, external to the, 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 the large Biden um, infrastructure package, et cetera, to see stocks higher. So look, I'm a little bit, um, you know, I'm, I'm searching for a catalyst like you are, Nadine, to see stocks higher. Um, perhaps it's just this break out of the range locally. It's, you know, it's it's a range we've been in for the last five months. It'll break out eventually, and when it does, it's probably going to, you know, break out on a degree of velocity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we've been hearing, and that's what we'll be watching out for. James Garish, thank you so much for joining us. Have a good day of trade. You too, guys.